Mina, konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. So, we're going back to the story of Gideon, and very interesting thing happens with here. Um, for you who know the story, sit back and enjoy the ride. It, it's a well-used one, I know, in churches, but it's a great story. So, I don't, I don't mind rehashing some good stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. And for those of you who are brand new to the faith, or just are new to this particular section of the Bible because it's all Old Testament and stuff, welcome, welcome, welcome. There's some good stuff written back here. So check it out. I'm going to start in Judges chapter 7, verse 2. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now therefore proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. If you remember the last few things that I've talked about, the last few little messages, we've been covering Gideon and what the Lord's doing in his life, how the Lord brought him to repentance, how the Lord raised him up from threshing wheat in a wine press hidden away to being a leader against the Midianites. And so now, and after, after three miracles, Gideon's finally convinced that the Lord really and truly is with him. He's going out to march, and now God's saying, oh, by the way, you have too many people with you. The, tell anyone who's afraid they can go home. <laughs> How many armies in the world do you know of that where the leader stands before the truth and says, everybody, today we're about to head into combat. It's likely some of you are going to die. Now, if any of you are scared, feel free to go return to your tent or go home. You don't have to be here. You can, you can just go away. How many people do you think would stay? And 22,000 of the people returned, and 10,000 remained. So that's, that's crazy. The Lord, now that his faith has been like strengthened three times, now God's starting to push a little bit. Now God's like, okay, you're finally marching out. Good. Now we need to get rid of some soldiers. Let's get rid of almost two-thirds of them. Well, actually a little over two-thirds of them. <laughs> I wonder what was going through Gideon's mind at that time. I mean, he obeyed the Lord. He said what the Lord told him to say. And the men that wanted to go home went home. But I just personally wonder what was going through Gideon's mind. Like, is, is this for real? Are, are you sure? Are you really, really, really sure about this one? So 22,000 people leave. 10,000 are left. But verse 4, the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Skip down to the bottom, skip down to verse 7. Then the Lord said to Gideon, By the 300 men who lapped, that lapping water that is, read, read between these two verses if you want the full story. By the 300 men who lapped, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. So three, Gideon and plus 300 are going up against, heh, here's the real 300 right here, ladies and gentlemen. Heh, <laughs> heh, references, heh, <laughs> heh. Here's the real battle of Gideon and 300 men versus... I forget the exact number. Judges has already said that they covered the land like locusts. That's how big the armies that were opposing Israel were. So he's he, the Lord reduces them to 300 men so they can't possibly claim any credit for themselves once they win. And Gideon does obey. He needs one more sign. Just read the chapter if you're curious. He needs one more little sign. Um, to uh, really push him to go forward all the way and to completely and totally commit at the last minute. But the Lord provides it very graciously, and they go on to win. I'll spoil that much for you. Um, by all means, read behind me, make sure I'm telling you the truth. But spoiler alert, Gideon and the Israelites won. If only the Israelites before Gideon had expressed that kind of faith as, as they were trying to conquer the promised land. Yes, there were difficulties, yes, there were problems, but with the Lord with them, they could have won. If 300 men can overcome a multitude, and I'm pretty sure at some point somewhere, I, I've already discussed how the Old Testament likes to tell you some things later on, when it's kind of like, why didn't you mention that earlier? I would have personally liked it if you mentioned that earlier. I'm pretty sure that the Midianite army exceeded 100,000 people. That's a lot of people. The Israelites certainly could have taken over the Promised Land completely if they'd really followed the Lord with all their hearts. And if Joshua had been completely obedient like he should have been. If you're interested to hear some more of those details, check out my previous messages. Just uh, click, 
click through my channel, I need to set up my channel and make these things a little bit more accessible for you guys. So I'm still working on stuff to make my YouTube channel better. Thank you all very much for watching. I love you guys, and God bless.